Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little Akim out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being, being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Devil Camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And this video is going to be inspired by uh, a series of texts that took place earlier today uh, uh, between some of the different heads, man. And as we know through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Esau has been set up to lose. He was born to lose, man. And this is ordained by the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Esau is a born loser. No matter how you cut the situation, no matter what things he tries to tries to scheme and to plot and to do, it is set up for this man to lose according to the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. The most the, the words that the most high uttered out of the, out of his mouth basically basically conclude that what? Esau is going to lose. This is what he was created to be, a loser. The Edomites, the so-called white race, they are losers. They might seem like they're winning now, but when it's all said and done, when the credit is rolled, and the Most High calls a rap, calls it a rap on Babylon the Great and the beast system, in the end, what happens? Esau loses why is because that is the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that's how the most I wrote the story to go and that's what it's going to be when it's all said and done man point blank period there's nothing that anyone can do to change this Esau was set up and born to lose so let's start right here at Romans 9 and 11 says what for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. So before these children were even in the womb, it was already ordained. You see? What purpose they were going to have. It was already ordained, man. Before the foundation of the world was laid, it was already ordained for Esau to lose. And that's what it's going to be. Because it goes on to say in Romans 9 and 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And that was the, that was the end of discussion. That, still, that, that sold it up. Of what it was going to be. The elder shall serve the younger. And the Most High had already decided this before the children were even born, before the earth, before the foundation of the earth was even laid. The Most High had already decided that this is what it was going to be. The elder was going to serve the younger. Now let's go into the prophecy. Let's go to it. Genesis 27. No, it's like it. Genesis 25. It's like it. Yep. Genesis 25 and 21. And Isaac entreated for entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren. And Yahweh was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? So she's like, If the most I was blessed me to have these children, why are they fighting like this in my womb? This is a blessing. Why why is this happening? Why is this going on? And she went to inquire of Yahweh through who? A prophet. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah said unto her, 
two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels so he's he's given up he's given her the rundown two manner of people two separate nations you see it says what and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger this was already decided before the children were even born hell this is already decided before the children were even in the womb that the elder was going to serve the younger because when you have the full understanding you have the full understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's will you know and understanding that you know and understand that the everlasting kingdom was always going to come to the Israelites or, or let me say it like this the uh, Yahweh Shah and the sons of the Most High when it was all said and done man and he had it play out and, and it ran through who? it ran through Jacob and Esau was ordained to be what? Jacob's servant so before he was even born he was set up to lose man he was set up to be a servant by the heavenly father Yahweh by the almighty the ancient of days has ordained that Esau is going to be a slave man point blank period he loses and he's trying to fight against it he's doing everything that he possibly can to try to overturn the Most High's word, but guess what? There is nothing you can do to stop it. You were set up and ordained to be up under our feet, and that's what it's going to be when it's all said and done, man. Verse 24 says what? Now remember, it says what? The elder shall serve the younger. The el That's the prophecy. Your eldest son, your son who is going to be born first, the son that was going to breach your womb first, is going to serve the younger son the son that comes after verse 24 and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled behold there were twins in her womb fraternal twins not identical twins fraternal and the furs came out red all over like in hairy garment and they called his name Esau and the furs came out red all over like in hairy garment and they called his name Esau so what, what's going to happen? The elder is going to serve the younger. Who came out first? And the first, which will make him what? The elder came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. There it is, right there, man. There it is. There it is. Yeah, how about Shimi Shah is who had this play out like this, man. Esau was born first to fulfill the prophecy of what? The elder serving the younger. And that's what it's gonna be. And there is nothing that you can do to stop it. You cannot overturn this, man. You see? You cannot overturn this. Then it goes on how Esau sold the birthright and all that, man. But going back to Romans 9. It says what? Romans 9 and 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, you see the will of the Most High according to election might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Jacob represents who? The Israelites. But Esau represents the so-called white race, the Edomites, you see, have I hated. This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is ordained. Even though Esau, let's say, even though the Most High Yahweh has given Esau, you see, a, a, a world rulership, he still loves the Israelites because, because the thing is, yet Esau's had possession of the earth for a long time. But guess what? He's never really got to fully enjoy it. He never got to fully enjoy his blessing, man, because the whole time he had to fight and do all these things. And in the back of his mind, we were there. We gotta keep these niggas sleep. Let's spend all this money to keep them sleep. Let's keep this to keep them distracted. Let's do, let's do this and let's do that. That's what he's doing the whole time in his kingdom. He never had true rest, man. He never got to fully enjoy this planet Earth. 
and the beauty that it beholds, man, that it holds. Because the most I don't give a fuck about Esau. But the thing is, when we come into power, our rest is going to be, we're going to have a full rest. We're not, we're not going to have to worry about nobody coming up against us. We're not going to have to worry about trying to keep something hidden, uh, uh, identities hidden and all these things, man. We're not going to have to worry about doing none of that. So we're going to be able to enjoy the fullness of the earth. We're going to fully enjoy paradise, man. And that's something Esau has not had. Why? Because the most I hate him. Yeah, the most I gave him, gave him uh, control of the earth. But he never, he, he's, in, he's in the earth fighting wars now. <laughs> he's in his rest at war. He's at war in his rest, man. The most I is not going to do us like that. When, we, when the most I says that we're going to have rest, that's what he means. We're going to have full rest and no one is going to make us afraid ever again, man. That's something that the most I didn't give unto Esau. Verse 14 says what? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the most high? Most high forbid. No. Because it says what? Verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Do you see that? So the most high is not unrighteous for choosing Jacob over Esau. The most high can do whatever he wants to do. And he chose, you see, to lay his spirit in Israel. He didn't choose Esau. And that, that and that's a cut to, to, to this uh, uh, bullshit doctrine of God loves everybody. No, he doesn't. The Most High only loves the Israelites. The Most High only loves Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their seed, man. That's it. Let's get this real quick. This is Second Edges thirteen. I mean three and uh thirteen. It says what? Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. You see, which is the son of the Most High, right? Verse fourteen. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showedest thy will. You see that? That's the cut of the Most High. The Most High being for all people. Because if that was the case, the most I would have showed every nation his will. But he only showed it to a chosen seed. You see, that stemmed out of uh that stemmed out of Abraham. Verse 15. And made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed, and all nations do not come out of Abraham. Because you, when you read the scriptures with the proper understanding, you see that the Most High streamline, streamlines who he's dealing with. It runs from uh, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob and then to the 12 tribes. That's the seed that the Most High promised to never forsake. The Most High ain't dealing with you heathen nations. He's only dealing with the children of Israel. 16 says what? And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. So even Ezra is giving you the rundown of what it is. It says what? As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee. Meaning Jacob was what? The chosen, the election. He was elected by the Most High. And put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. So let's go into this word, this, this term put by. What does put by mean? You fucking ass, man. Put by goes into what? To put something, put, to put by, putting by, puts by. Archaic, it goes into what? Reject. Esau was rejected of the Most High. Making him what? The loser. According to the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. To lay aside saving. And it tells you in prophecy, as we're going to continue to read in Romans 9, that Esau has been laid aside and saved for what? A great judgment from the Most High. Why? For all the things that they've done unto the Israelites. 
for all the things that they've done unto the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And the Most High makes this point known all throughout the scriptures, man. How he's going to bring a great judgment upon the house of Edom. This is what they were created for. This is the only reason that the Edomites were created. So the Most High can cast the, the greatest judgment the world has ever seen upon these people. That's the only thing that Esau was created for. That's it. And you might say, well, why would the Most High do this? How can he do this? How inhumane? What kind of God would do this? The Almighty, Yahweh. And why? It's because he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Hence the term Almighty. Almighty. Nothing is above the Most High. Everything in, in, in existence runs according to the Most High's will, man. You see? Now, going back to Romans 9 and 15, it says what? For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It's all about the Most High's will, man. And the pride of man has, has, has uh, uh, boosted their ego and arrogance into uh, to astronomical heights, thinking that they can question the Most High and tell him what he can and cannot do. That's not how it works, man. Verse 16 tells you what? So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. You see? It's all about the will of the Most High. Everything, and the scriptures tell you that what? Oh. Let's get it. Revelation 4 and 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. All things were created for the Most High's pleasure. And he can do whatever he wants to do with his creation. And that's exactly what the Most High is showing you in the earth. He's exalted these these so-called white people, these Edomites, you see, and they've been around so long that when we tell you that they're going to be eradicated according to the Most High's will, it's hard to comp it's hard for you to comprehend. Because you look at these people as if, oh, they're such good people and da 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 da, -da bullshit. No, they're not. Everything that they've done in the earth and accomplished in the earth is because the Most High set them up to do that. He put them in the position to be this so-called great nation because the nation of Edom is not great. You see, they're not great. But the Most High has allowed them to do these major works in the earth. And everybody is eating it up and looking at them as if they're, they're, the, uh, as they're, as if they're the chosen people when they're not. And the Most High is going to show you this by this completely dis destroying the nation of Edom, man. He's going to show you that these people mean nothing to him. And there's billions upon billions of Edomites on this planet Earth. And the Most High is going to get rid of every single one of them. Why? It's because it is his will. So back in Romans 9 and 17, it says what? For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Esau is a fucking loser, man. He is a fucking loser. And that's what he's been created to be. Romans 9, call halayim laya how about shimmy how shah. Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. The reason that, that, that Egypt became a superpower in the earth was for what? The sole purpose that Egypt was great as they uh was as great as they were. It was only for one reason. For the Most High to destroy it so his name could, could be declared all throughout the earth. The same thing is happening with these so-called white people, these Edomites. The only reason they have been uplifted and exalted the way they have been is so the Most High can destroy them 
with the greatest destruction the world has ever seen so his name can be glorified and magnified in the earth. That's the only reason Esau has been created, man. That's the sole purpose of these people. You see? That's the sole, sole purpose of the so-called white race. They are a temporary people. When it's all said and done, the only thing that the Most High is going to completely eradicate, eradicate from the planet Earth is the so-called white race, the Edomites. Everything else is going to continue on forevermore. But the, but these Edomites, they are going to be completely put out of the earth as it tells you in Job, man. You see? Verse 18 says what? Therefore he have mercy on whom he, have, he will have mercy, and whom he will he harden it. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Nay, but old man. Nay, but old man. Who art thou that replies against the Most High? Exactly. Who are you going to... Who are you to tell the Most High what he can and cannot do with his creation? Hell, the, 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 the reason your ass is only living and breathing is because the Most High put, put a spirit in you to do that, man. And if, he, and, if he, and if he takes the spirit up out of the, uh, the body that it animates, if he takes the spirit back that, that animates the body, guess what? Your ass die. And you have no say-so over the matter. So who are you to try to reply against the Most High to tell him what he can and cannot do? That's the pride of man. It says what? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why has thou made uh, why has thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And that's exactly what has been done. The most high is in control of this whole this whole thing called existence. You see? And he made a vessel unto honor, which are the Israelites, you see, and a vessel unto dishonor. Which are the Edomites. Verse 22 says what? What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that's what he's done with Esau. He's allowed Esau to go on this earth and fucking wreak havoc upon his people, upon his paradise that he's created. The Most High has allowed Esau to do this with much long suffering. Why? So Esau's iniquity can be filled to the brim so the most I can bring that destruction upon him because that's what Esau was created for. Let's get this real quick. Uh man, uh uh now I slip in my mind. I know it's Proverbs 16. Let's hurry up and get it before I forget where it is. Yep. Proverbs 16 and 4 says what? Yahweh have made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. You see? Who are the wicked according to the Bible? The Edomites. It tells you that in Malachi 4, man. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. It's like Malachi 1. It's like it. Malachi 1 and 1. The burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. Once again, showing you that Esau has been rejected of the Most High, the entire nation of Edom. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. You hear that? The Edomites are called the border of wickedness, because wherever the Edomites are, wickedness is propagated from their borders, man. And it says what? Yahweh have indignation. Indignation goes into what? Righteous hatred or righteous anger against the Edomites forever. So they're being reserved for the day of evil. And that goes into what? 
the day the Most High unleashes that great destruction upon that nation, man. That's what they have been created for. Romans 16 says what? I mean, Romans 9 and 16 says what? Oh, Salaki, where we at? Khan, so it says what? Romans 9 and 22. What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? Once again, that's what Esau was created for because he is a loser, man. He was born, he was ordained, born, and set up. He was ordained, set up, and born to lose, man. That's all that's coming upon the nation of Edom. You see? And we could put I could pull a handful of scriptures right now to show you. That when it's all said and done, these people lose. Let's just let's let's pull a few prophecies, man, to show you what's about to happen to this nation. They are the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, right? Let's go to this. Isaiah 34 and uh, 5, it says what? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Who is Idumia? Edom. Edom equals red. Edom. Edomite. Idumian. Descendants of Esau. You see? That sword being bathed in heaven is talking about the ICBM missiles, which is shot into the upper atmosphere. You see, travels through the upper atmosphere, being bathed in heaven, and it's going to come down upon who? The Edomites, man. That's who that thermonuclear destruction is being is set up to come upon mainly, man. The Edomites, the so-called white race, especially here in the land of America. This is what they have been set up for. It says what? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment and upon the people of my curse to judgment. What does it say about the curse? Where's the curse at? Oh, man. <laughs> it says what? Proverbs 33, uh, Proverbs 3 and 33. The curse of Yahweh is in the house of the wicked. Once again, who are the wicked? The Edomites. You see? They are the people, a hey, curse with the most high's judgment. That great destruction in the form of 200 million thermonuclear warheads. This is Esau's reward. This is Esau's judgment. This is what he... This is what he has been reserved for. This is why he's been exalted in the earth. To receive the greatest destruction the world has ever seen, man. Why? Because he was ordained and born to lose. He's a fucking loser, man. To be completely eradicated out of the earth? Come on, man. So Proverbs 3 and 33. The curse of Yahweh is in the house of the wicked. But he blesseth the habitation of the just. <sighs> Or who is the blessing ordained to come upon? Those that he loved. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because we have been ordained, born, and set up to win. Call You see? So back in it. Isaiah 34 and 6. Or man of Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, the Edomites. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. Once again, the Edomites. Verse 6. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats. With the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra. Which was a chief, uh, a chief city in the land of, I, uh, 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 of Seir. Esau's natural habitation. And that represents what? America today. Because this is Esau's chief dwelling place, the land of America, Babylon the Great. So the Most High says what? He has a, a, a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. You see that? Once again, the land of Idumia, which is the land of Edom, which is America. You see? This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has prepared. For the nation of Edom, man. A great destruction. 
Why? Because they are the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. Verse 7 says what? And the, and the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of recompenses, for the controversy of Zion. And this great destruction is coming upon you for all the things that you've done unto the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Us Israelites, man. Verse 9 says what? And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof into burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. And that fulfills, fulfills the prophecy of what we read in uh, Malachi 1 and 4. You see? He's going to make his habitation desolate. That goes into the destruction of America, man. This is what Esau has been ordained to receive. Let's get another one. Let's get it in uh Oh man. So many places. Let's go to let's get it in Obadiah. Let's get Obadiah real quick. Let's get Obadiah one. We'll start at nine. It says what? And thy mighty men O Taman, and this whole chapter is dedicated to Edom. Matter of fact, Obadiah one and one says what? The vision of Obadiah, which is the prophecy. Over the most high gave unto Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. So this entire chapter, this one chapter, a long book, is completely dedicated to the nation of Edom, the so-called white race. You see? This is addressing you crackers, man. Obadiah 1 and 9 says what? And thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed. To the end that every one of the Mount of Esau, the Mount of Esau talks about, talks about the whole lineage or family tree of Esau, may be cut off by what? By slaughter. This is what it has been ordained to happen to the Edomites. Why? Because they are the most high, they, they are the uh, people of the most high's curse to judgment. And what a great judgment is going to be, man. Verse 10 tells you. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You see? That is what is ordained to come upon the Edomites, man. Let's get another one. Obadiah 1 and 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, hath spoken it. This is what's ordained to come upon the Edomites, man. Complete destruction. That's all they have in the that's all they have to look for in their future. Destruction and death, man. Punishments for what they've done unto us. You see? This is what's coming. Once again, he was born to lose, man. Let's get Ezekiel. Let's get it in 35 first. There's another prophecy against who? Esau, Mount Seir, the Edomites, the so-called white race. Ezekiel 35 and 1. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. And Mount Seir is the original dwelling place of the Edomite. That's his natural habitation. You see Mount Petra, man. And, say, and what does the Most High tell us to do? And prophesy against it. Verse 3 says what? And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, O Mount Seir, which, which re represents the entire nation of Edom. Just like Jerusalem represents the Israelites, Mount Seir represents the Edomites. And what does the Most I say against Mount Seir? I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Why? Because they are the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. That's all you read about. When you read about the Edomites, you read about them being made desolate because the Most High is going to cast great destruction upon them. And this has not happened yet, Vocab Malone. The Edomites have not been done away with because they still have to receive that great destruction from the hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah as punishment 
for what they've done unto the Israelites. This has not taken place yet. This is future prophecy. Verse 4 says, well, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Why? Five, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, and the time of their calamity, and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, in thy hills, and in thy valleys, and in thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. You see? Man, man I just, let's just finish the whole damn chapter then, I guess. <laughs> Ezekiel 35 and 10 says what? Because I have said these two nations, the northern and southern kingdom, and these two countries shall be mine. And we will possess it whereas Yahweh was there trying to make yourself gods over the Israelites, man. Trying to portray yourself as being our gods when that's not the fucking case. The Israelites, or so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, our god is who? That Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Not the fucking Edomite. The so-called white man is not our God, man. He's only a man, and the Most High is about to show the entire world this, man. Verse 11 says what? Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shah, I will even do according to thine anger, and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them, when I have judged thee, because we're the only ones telling you that the Almighty, the one you ignorantly call God, whose true name is Yahweh, is going to do this unto the so-called white race. Nobody is telling you this. Everybody, is, everybody else is fighting on the behalf of Esau, trying to save this damn devil from a destruction that, that has already been ordained to come upon him. It's a lie. You got everybody else in this earth, Satan. <laughs> you got everybody else in this earth trying to fight and save Esau from a destruction that has already been ordained to come upon them before the nation, before the earth was even created. This is you cannot save Esau from this, man. This is his fate. This is what it's always been. You see, this is what it's always been. And, and, on, and the only ones who are letting you know this are who? The men of the Lord. The men of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Nobody else is speaking on the destruction of Esau except for us. Verse 12 says what? And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, they are laid desolate. Desolate. They are given to us to consume. And that's that's what they've done. That's why they categorize, uh, categorize us as what? Being three four uh, three fifths of a human. So they can be justified in slaying our people the way they do. Because they feel like it's being given unto them to, to consume us, man. To destroy us with hey, without mercy. But guess what? Every single drop of Israelite blood that you Edomites have, have shed on this earth, you are going to have to pay for it. Thirteen says what? Thus with your mouth have ye boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus saith the Lord Power Yahweh. When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do me, even all of it. And they shall know that I am Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So that's a, I just read the whole chapter, and that just goes into the complete destruction of the Edomites, man. Because this is what they have been set up to receive. They are losers, man. Ezekiel. I'm going to start wrapping it up because 
Ezekiel 25 and 12, it says what? Thus said Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because the Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged themselves upon them. Therefore, thus said Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Taman, and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword. All that is written in these scriptures about the Edomites is great destruction coming upon them, which has not happened yet, but will happen in the coming future, man. You see? The near future. Verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. You see that? That hasn't happened yet. This is what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. And that's how we're going to fulfill what was written in Ezekiel 35. By destroying these Edomites according to the Most High's anger and according to the Most High's fury, according to what they've done unto us. Why? Because they have been set up to receive this, man. They are losers. And it's always been that way. It will always be that way. You see? It's over for the Edomite, man. Hell, it was over a... Hey, it was over from the beginning. It was over from the beginning, man. So let's see if we have anything else in Romans 9. So Romans 9 and 22 says what? What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and do it with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, which are the Edomites? Because what? They've been set up to lose. Verse 23 tells you, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which are who? The Israelites. We have been prepared unto glory, man. We have been aforetime, ordained, predestined, to be prepared unto glory. And that's all you read about when you read about the Israelites being saved from the land of their captivities and being brought back into their lands, man. Being brought into everlasting glory. You see? Let's get a few of them to show you. And the Most High never says this about any other nation except for the nation of Israel. Let's get a... Uh, Jeremiah 29. What was it? Uh, yep. And this is the most high talking to the Israelites. The vessels of, uh, of glory, man. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. That's what the most high has prepared for the vessels of glory, man. You see the complete contrast? You see all that's talked about with Esau is what? Destruction, destruction, destruction. And when you read about the Israelites, the most I tell you, yeah, I put these curses upon you and I've punished you, but the time is coming or the time is here. Well, what? I'm going to bring you from under the curses and bring you into these promises, these blessings that I promised to give unto you. That's that expected end. Thoughts of peace he has towards the Israelites, man. We're about to win. Verse 12 says what? And then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And that's what we're doing now, being returned back to the Heavenly Father through faith in Yahweh Shah. And I will be found of you, saith Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations. And from all the places where I have driven you, save Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. And I will bring you again into this place, whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Meaning what? He's going to take us back home. And bring us into a state of everlasting joy, man. And I'll wrap it up on this one. Jeremiah 31. And I just brought this out the other day, but it, 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 it goes into the point of what? We are the vessels of glory. That's what we've been ordained to be. It says what? Jeremiah, th oh, it's like it. Jeremiah 31 and, uh, no. Jeremiah 31 and 1. 
And at the same time, saith Yahweh, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall and they shall be my people. And when you understand what every time the Most High says that phrase, that He's going to be our God and we're going to be His people, He's talking about us being brought into that everlasting covenant, that second covenant that you read about in the same chapter that we're reading right here, and also in Hebrews eight, if I'm not mistaken. That's when we become the Most High's people when we're changed and brought into that second covenant. That's that expected end that the Most High has for us, man. Taking us away from sin. Taking us away from all sorrow and pain and agony. And bringing us into a complete state of righteousness, uh, peace, and joy, man. That's what Yahweh B'Shemi HaWashah plan has planned for the Israelites. His chosen people. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 2 says what? Thus saith Yahweh B'Shemi HaWashah. The people... Uh, no, no, let's, let's go down, let's go down. Because it's, it's a point I wanted to grab. Oh, man. Let's start right here at 7. For thus saith Yahweh B'Shemi HaWashah. Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yahweh B'Shemi HaWashah, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. And that's what's about to happen. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, which is America, Babylon the Great, and gather them from the coast of the earth. Why? Because we have been scattered all throughout the world. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the, wa by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah have redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. He's about to come and save us from the hand of Esau, man. And pour great destruction upon those who have held us captive for all this time. And he's going to do it through who? Our Lord Yahweh Shah. Verse 12 says what? Therefore shall they come and sing in the height of Zion. And shall flow together to the goodness of Yahweh. For wheat and for wine and for oil. And, they shall, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. You hear that? And they shall not sorrow any more at all. The Most High is going to take us away from all this shit that we suffer here up under the hands of our enemy, man. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah, you see a completely different contrast when the Most High talks about the Edomites and when the Most High talks about the Israelites. All you see in Esau's future is death and destruction, punishment. All you see in the future of the Edomites, I'm oh, sorry, the, the Israelites, Salakia, is what? Righteousness, happiness, and peace. And when you jump to Revelation 21, it tells you the same thing we just read in Jeremiah 31. Revelation 21 says what? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. The new heaven and the new earth is what? The Israelites coming into power. You see? That's the new government that's about to be established in the earth. The first heaven and the first earth is this current rulership that we suffer up under right now. Led by Esau Edom. The so-called white race. You see it says what? Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. What he's seeing right here is the Israelites coming down out of heaven in their glorified state, being brought back into the fullness of being the sons of the most high. Because at this point right here, we're under the second covenant. We're immortal. We have the new bodies. The world is going to witness the, the gods come down out of heaven, man. All according to the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. 
Verse 3 says what? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they're going to be what? And they shall be my people, and the Most High, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. That This lets us know that this is talking about the Israelites because the Most High has never said this about any other nation. He's only said this about the Israelites. As we just read in Jeremiah 31. And what does it say? To make the correlation between, between the two chapters. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Because we'll be up under that second covenant where we, where we can't sin ever again. What is, what, what's, what, is, what is sin? The transgression of the law. And what's the wages of sin? Death. But we're going to be brought into a state of never being able to sin again. So that means we'll never die again. And that's only promised and ordained for the Israelites. The Most High's vessels of glory. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For all, for the former things are passed away. This is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has planned for the Israelites. We are going to win, man. And the victory, hey, the victory, and the victory was sealed from the beginning. And like, just like our victory was ordained and sealed from the beginning. Esau's defeat was sealed from the foundation of the world. Since the, since the beginning of the foundation of the world, man. Or before the foundation of the world was even laid. You see? That's what it is right here, man. Esau is going to lose. And we are going to win according to the will of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. And there is nothing that anyone on this planet Earth can do to stop it. Thus saith the Bible. Thus saith Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakach Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful let I came out there, pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba, Abba.